Hi Year 10, Year 11. Today we're looking at sand dunes. We're here in Holcomb Beach in Norfolk. You can see the sea and the beach behind me. In front of me I'm facing a load of sand dunes. You can see them going up into the distance and we're going to be taking a transit across those sand dunes to see how they're formed and how they change as they go away from the sea. Now the thing about sand dunes is they're not formed by waves like a lot of um, coastal features. They're formed by the wind. They are aeolian features of deep position. So what do you need for sand dunes to form? First of all, you need sand. I know it's obvious, but many a GCC question have been lost by um, not knowing that fact. And the sand needs to be dry because it needs to be blown by the wind. So the beach, the best beaches for sand dunes have a high tidal range, a high difference between high tide and low tide. So that gives the sand time to dry out and get blown inland. Also, if the beach is very um, gently sloping, that means the, width, the sand can be blown a long way inland before being stopped. So this is the perfect uh, beach for sand dunes. So let's have a look now at the process of how sand dunes are formed. Sand dunes start forming when this wind blows sand up the beach and it gets stuck on debris at the back of the beach. So it could be old bits of grass, it could be bits of rubbish, it could be sticks, it could be shingle. And you can see here the sand has started to pile over this bit of um, dead grass. Now this is a great video I took on a windy day on Formby Beach. It shows how sand is blown up the beach until it gets trapped, in this case by a line of seaweed, and deposited either side of the seaweed. Now you can see how the sand is transported as suspension in the air, but also by hopping along the ground in a process called saltation, and that's from the French word sauté, which means to jump. And these mounds build up and then eventually um, special grasses that can survive growing in sand, like this marum grass here, start to grow on these mounds and they've got super deep uh, roots so they can reach the fresh water deep under the sand and they start to bind these mounds of sand together and this, this is called an embryo dune, it's the first stage of dune formation. Let's move back into the dunes and see how the dunes change. Come with me. on the four dunes and the sand has built up a lot higher you've got a lot more marum grass these pioneer plants that colonize this sand and traps it as it gets blown on shore binding the sand together into these mounds let's move on from the four dunes up to the yellow dunes come on Here we are even further back from the sea. These are the yellow dunes, called yellow because if you look at the sand here, it's still a very yellow colour. Not much has been added to that sand. The dominant type of vegetation is marum grass and they're a lot taller than the dunes that were nearer the sea because they've been here a lot longer. Now, as the marum grass dies off and uh, the grass, the leaves rot into the sand, this adds organic matter to the sand. And that does two things. It lowers the pH of the soil, and it also means that the, the sand is a lot more moist. And this enables other plants to grow. So you'll see that, that some other little types of plants are beginning to grow among the marum grass. This is called primary succession. Different types of plants are taking over from the marum grass. These, these dunes are still fairly unstable. In the winter, the embryo dunes, the four dunes, and sometimes the yellow dunes can just get destroyed by the storms. Um, and if we go back further away from the sea again, those dunes have been around a lot longer. They're less likely to be destroyed and you'll get even more different types of plants that have grown on them. So let's go and have a look further back. Come with me. So 
sometimes the wind erodes hollows between the dunes and these are called dune slacks. If they go beneath the water table, they can be filled with water, little ponds. Here you haven't got water, but you can see there's a greater variety of vegetation um, growing in this particular area between the, between the yellow dunes and the grey dunes that we're about to go and see. So let's go and have a look at the grey dunes now. about oh, four or five hundred metres away from the sea and we're on the grey dune. You can see there's a much greater variety of plants because the um, much more organic matter has been added to the sand, almost making soil. It's a grey colour if you zoom in here. You can see instead of that golden yellow sand of the yellow dunes, it's, the, it's a kind of grey colour with organic matter in it. Often, so that's why they're called grey dunes. You've got mosses, you've got grass, you've got low shrubs. You've even got little uh, tree saplings growing on the grey dune. Much greater water um, content, much greater organic matter or humus in the soil and much lower, um, much more acidic. So more plants can grow here, a lower pH. These are much more established. These dunes may have been here for a hundred years or so. Behind me, they're even established enough for trees to growing on there and those trees were planted about 200 years ago so that gives an idea of how old these dunes are and so the way these types of plants have taken over is called secondary succession and when you've actually got to the level of trees growing it's called the climax community Okay, so what have we got? We've got a gently sloping beach so the sand can bl be blown up to the back of the beach. Uh, we've got a high difference between high tide and low tide so the sand can dry out and get blown to the back of the beach. Then we have an obstacle which forms our embryo mound and then we have our little tufts of um, grasses that start to grow in the embryo mound and these build up to make bigger four dunes and then further back even bigger still yellow dunes they've got a lot more vegetation growing on them marram grass and then starting the marram grass are starting to change conditions for other vegetation to grow on the yellow dunes and then further back away from the sea you've got the oldest dunes and the conditions have changed so much they've got a lot more moisture a lot more organic humus in the in the in the soil that you've got a whole vaster range of vegetation growing on those dunes all the way up to trees. <laughs>